much. Okay, let me press got it. Okay, well, thank you very much for the invitation to uh, be here. You know, I've known Ed and three US for 50 years now, and I see that he's still not combing his hair. No. no. <laughs> anyway. Bruce, um, let me just say this. This topic is perfect because we have a lot of members downsizing, moving into condominiums where they can't put up outside antennas. And Bob K4DU, the previous time he was president, has been urging us to develop the expertise to build our own club-owned remote HF station. Okay, good to hear. Um, again, thanks. thank you very much for this invitation. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. And I think John has a copy of this brief. So if you miss anything in the presentation, uh, John will uh, send it out to everybody. So I'll, I'll jump right in uh, into this. Let's see if we can, oop. So the, what we're gonna do here is talk about, you know, why operate remotely? Why is there interest in this at all? And also I'm gonna get into three different approaches on how you can operate remotely. Um, there's two general techniques to do so. And by the way, I'm not talking about operating remotely when you're using somebody else's equipment. As many of you may know, you can actually pay to use certain websites where you're operating somebody else's equipment, somebody else's station for a fee. And of course, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about operating your own station. There's two general techniques though. Uh, and, and one of them is basically putting uh, software on the remote station and operating your, your computer back at your home QTH using this remote software. But another technique in general will be actually putting all your software at your home station like you're doing now and accessing, ooh, got a cat here who's angry, uh, who's accessing that station using a mirrored approach. That is you're mirroring your desktop and seeing your desktop uh, from the remote location. And I'll get into that. So why do you wanna do this? Basically you wanna do this for the reasons I have listed here. I've kind of scoured the internet to find out why do people operate rem remotely? And in my case, it's because I have a second home here in Scottsdale now with homeowners restrictions. So I can't set up any station then operate um, from, I can operate uh, DMR, I can operate uh, uh, UHF 440 and two meters, but that's about it. So I knew when I made the decision to come out here and rent an apartment for a year uh, and come out here during the winter months in Virginia, uh, I knew I still wanted to operate on HF, in particular FT8. Uh, but the reasons here are some of them. I've seen people even operate in their own homes uh, from a different room. Uh, and I've seen situations where people do demonstrations away from home and still want to access their stations and even mobile ops. When I made the decision to come out here last March, I didn't know anything. Uh, anything at all about operating remotely. It was a little bit frightening to me. So I went on the internet to search for how do you do this? Um, and one of the briefings that I saw online was from the Madison DX Club. And I do want to give them credit. And I have their URL uh, taking you to a, a pretty complex brief. And they also have YouTube videos. So some of the ideas you'll see that I'm using certainly come from that brief, but I'm also adding a few things into it. You know, I had this uh, briefing all wrapped up a few weeks ago, uh, but then I went to, um, I think it was a Facebook uh, IC7610 site and somebody mentioned this German software. And I uh, looked at this German software, downloaded it and loved it. So I've included that software in this brief. So the first approach to operating remotely 
is when you operate with the manufacturer software loaded at your remote site. Now, this briefing is ICOM oriented, but I'm gonna to try to talk about how you can do it without using ICOM. But I'll start off here with this approach. In this manner, you're putting the manufacturer software on your remote computer in your remote home. And uh, for the ICOM, that's this RSBA1 software, uh, which I might add is awful. This is just awful piece of software. And the only reason why I'm going to uh, talk about it and give a demonstration for it is that it's very, very popular because it's an ICOM piece of software. Uh, but you can't operate with just the software alone. You still need a way to remotely switch antennas, especially if you have multiple antennas. And also you need some way to repair your home network. We all have had problems with routers freezing on our home network, and we need some way to automatically correct that. So in this approach, I'm showing on the left, your home QTH and your rig uh, remote location on the right side. So the approach here is putting the manufacturer software on your computer, uh, going into your home network, the router, the modem, and at the other side, you have your rig. But even with this approach to operate, you need some way to switch antennas, especially those of you that have multiple antennas. In this case, I'm showing a product from Spain that is sold by DX Engineering. And what it does, it allows you to basically automatically switch antennas based upon the frequency band that your rig is on. Uh, for about 19 years, I've used a DX engineering antenna switch uh, and it had a manual control. So over the past year, I got this EA4TX box. Uh, it was very easy to integrate with the rig and it does allow remote switching of antennas. Anyway, with this ICOM RSBA1 software for ICOM users, it's just really for voice and CW only. You can't do digital, you can't easily do FT8 at all. There's some alternatives to the software for ICOM users that's out there on the net, this thing called Win4 ICOM Suite, which I looked at when it first came out. I didn't like it, but I guess it's mature now. Now, what about those people who don't have ICOM rigs? The solution, very frankly, is to go off on Google, search for remote amateur radio software, Yesu or Kenmore or whatever. I promise you, you will see tons of software out there that is designed to uh, be placed on your remote computer. And let me go one more step further that's critical when you operate. And then shown on this slide, I mentioned before one of the biggest problems when you're away from home like I am for five months or six months is how do you keep your home network up? Because I think we've all had problems with modems or routers freezing at home where we had to turn off the power or press a button on the router to restart the home network. So the question is, how do you do this automatically? So there's this $100 product that's pretty nifty. And what you do, what it does, it senses the output of the router. And it looks to see if you have a continuous internet connection. If it doesn't see an internet connection, what it does is it shuts off the modem, shuts off the router, and then it restarts the modem in sequence, it power is applied to the modem, and then a few minutes later, power is applied to the router. And then it senses again to see if it has the internet connection. So it's kind of a neat tool. Uh, I can't say how many times my home network has been restarted. There is no log that tells me that. All I know is that the home network has been solidly up for Geez, I've been away now for three months. So no matter what rig you have or what software you use, you need this uh, ability to restart your home network if it freezes. Uh, what I'm gonna do now, um, and I mentioned the ICOM RSBA1 software. 
the software has two pieces. It requires many, many parameters to set up. Uh, it's, pre it's pretty ugly. So um, let me see if I can do a demo. Uh, on the screen now is my Arizona desktop on the computer I have here. And let's see if I can, I can start it. This is a pre-recorded demo. I can do these things live, but I wasn't sure how to switch back and forth on Zoom to do this. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing up one piece of the software. I'm not showing all the programming that goes behind it, but you've got to do a connection on their server tab. Before you start this app, you've got to then connect your radio and you've got to hit a connect button. And you'll see that at the bottom here. And even with that, you're not finished because after you do all that, you've got to bring up the actual uh, display itself. That's a second piece of software. Um, the software takes a long time to understand how it works. And once you bring it up, oh, let's see if we can bring the audio down. Hold on. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill the audio. I think yeah, we're we're not hearing the audio, so you're good. Oh, oh, oh good. <laughs> I was killing it over at my end. Uh, what you've got to do, this is not intuitive screen. It doesn't relate to the ICOM screen. And when you want to change the uh, sound uh, levels or any of the levels, you either right click to increase the level or left click to decrease, it's, uh, it's extremely not intuitive. And uh, so anyone might comment out there if they're actually using this piece of software, I just don't like it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's what, that's what it looks like. Now I wanna get into another app that I'm very, very excited about. And it's a Mac app. And then you wonder, well, if you don't have Mac equipment, what can you do? Um, well, the good news is, is that this app works fabulously on an iPad. So if you happen to have an old iPad lying around, or if you, even if you don't want to get a refurbished one for a couple of hundred dollars, this is the easiest way to operate remotely. And uh, I was really shocked. It's a German app called SDR Control. And uh, as, as before, we still want to have the network automatically reset and we want to have the ability to switch antennas but um, we want an easy, easier method to uh, operate remotely so we're going to it and the difference is on the right side here we're using this uh, application from marcus Roskosh. I don't even know if he's got call letters, but it's a wonderful app. I'm going to do a demonstration for you. And the neat part about it, it, it just requires no skill to set up. I mean, it was unbelievable. I downloaded this app on an iPad and uh, fired it up. And immediately I was able to connect to my ICOM rig. Uh, it just sounds amazingly simple. But currently the app only works with the flex radio and certain ICOM radios. And he claims that he's going to expand its applicability uh, to other radios. Not only was it easy to set up, it works on cellular, which is not advertised. By the way, this app works for uh, CW uh, data and voice. It's pretty neat and I'll do a little uh, a demo of it in a second. Uh, some of the screens that you get on the iPad, the uh, left shows the main screen on it. Uh, this is how you're seeing the ICOM rig. It's very intuitive on the left side. In the middle, I show an FT8 application. It shows the FT8 screen. Uh, then when you press map on the top of the FT8 screen, you get what you see on the upper uh, right. You actually see a mapping of all the current stations uh, on FT8, all the locations. In the lower right has another screen, tools, and it has a bunch of neat tools. It has a POTA app with all the POTA stations on, PSK reporter, so you know who's on, on the air at any one time and how much activity there is. Uh, I mean, just a lot of neat applications, call lookup, 
and you can even turn your rig into a scanner. Uh, in the lower center, I'm showing basically three different applications in addition to voice. You have FT8, you have CW. There's another one called HFX, which I'm really not familiar with. In the lower uh, right, I'm showing it, it automatically receives a CW. I am not a CW person, but this was just pretty neat to set the radio on the CW frequency. It automatically uh, reads out the CW. And if you choose to, you could type in the lower box and we'll convert that to CW to begin your QSO. Or if you want, you can use a paddle. So I'm gonna give a demonstration of this. Let's see if we can get it started. This is the iPad screen right now that you're saying, uh, fire up the demo and let's see if we can get it, um, get it playing. So it, it fires up right away. This is in real time. It just like in a few seconds, once you press the button, this is the screen you get. I hope you're not getting uh, the audio. Um, Right now, you're seeing actually a neat capability is on the, the pan. It's actually telling you what stations are coming in. And um, it, it's just very easy. This is how you set the app. In this case, I'm, I'm putting FT8. And these are the FT8 stations coming in. I'm showing here, I'm responding to the EC3A Spanish station. I'm now transmitting, so my uh, false church station is transmitting out. And we'll wait at the top bar, there's a little blue bar at the top sliding. That's kind of the 15 second bar that shows you where you are in the transmission or reception period. And the station's responding back to me. I'm coming in at uh, minus 15 dB. Uh, I'm sending out to him, he's coming in at minus nine. So uh, I'm getting him better than he's getting me, which is natural because I have all attic antennas at my QTH under HOA. And then finally, we'll wrap up. He'll come back to me uh, with the response, hopefully, that he, he's received my transmission. There you go. I'm getting the 73. I'm transmitting back to him. My 73s, the QSO was finished and uh, it automatically records the QSO. Here are the current stations on the air. This is the mapping of all the FT8 stations. And again, this is, you're seeing this on the iPad screen. Uh, these are all the different apps you can get. And I'm showing now the logbook. This is an example of the logbook you get. It automatically records the station. In this case, it's giving the name of the operator uh, and the record, the time, and so on. It's, it, it's pretty neat. It's just so simple to set up. Uh, this is the screen, uh, a, a little blown up screen. You can see the stations that are on the air. I'm gonna switch now to CW. This is, I'm switching bands here actually, and it's receiving the um, CW. And, um, I don't think you're getting the audio on this, but this is an example of how it receives. I'm not sure which station this was. Here it comes. And, um, and then you can press your kind of thumb or finger across the iPad screen and it will change frequency as I'm showing here. It's, uh, it's really neat. I think the stations are being filled either from the from the DX spots, I'm guessing. Here it comes. And okay. Let's oh, let's go to the next one. Uh, now I'm gonna talk about another approach. And this one, all the software is staying on your home rig. And all we're doing at the remote location is putting on software that peers into your home computer. So you have really no software on your remote station. All you're doing is, is making a mirror image at your remote station of the screen you have at home. So in this case, 
were getting a dedicated Windows desktop computer and we're putting all of our ham apps in your home station on this uh, computer. Uh, and this computer is a refurbished computer and most people, I'd say many people use refurbished computers for this. The computer I use in my home station cost $179, got it from Micro Center in Fairfax. Uh, another place people buy computers from is Newegg on the East Coast. Uh, they're cheap and they really work well. It's all solid state. Uh, and there's an advantage doing this for security purposes. It's nice that you don't have any personal uh, software. You're, you want to keep your financial records off, your personal photographs and everything. You just want this devoted for amateur radio. And this is on all the time, this computer stays up. And uh, we're adding to this a, a, an ability to remotely reboot the desktop computer that you're using. If you're away from home, uh, you run the risk of this computer freezing as sometimes computers do, or you have certain apps like WSJTX, the FT8 app, and sometimes you have to restart it or you may have to restart the whole computer because you lose your audio connection from your uh, computer into the rig. And I've had to restart the computer remotely many times. And it's also critical that you bypass the front switch. You go into the BIOS, bypass the front switch. So when you remotely restart your computer, uh, it starts up again, fresh as new. And I'll show you an example. So in this particular case, the remote location has, I'm using Splashtop. It's an expensive application, but boy, does it work well. It gives me a complete look at my computer on the left side at home and uh, just very, very reliable. So all we're doing here, you're taking your uh, remote location, putting Splashtop on it. That basically is it going into your network. And at the other end, we're setting up that um, refurbished computer. All the software is on it. So in my case, I'm using Ham Radio Deluxe as my logging software and control software using the WSJTX uh, FT8 application on it. So um, basically, looks pretty simple. And the advantage of this approach is you can use this with any, any rig. So if you have a Kenwood or Yesu, or flex, whatever, you just operate as you would at home and you remotely get access, in my case, using the Splashtop app, but there's some other software you could use as well. And now the one more step that's important, we're adding again that remote switch on the left side to automatically keep the router and modem up, but we're adding one more thing on the lower left, and that is a Wi-Fi enabled power switch. That power switch is controlled all the way at the right of your screen, the lower bottom, you're seeing a smartphone connection. So the way it works is from the smartphone on the right side of the screen, lower right side of the screen, you can turn on and off the AC power to your desktop. And the purpose again is if that desktop freezes or you have an anomaly where you're not getting audio to and from your rig, on WSJTX in particular, restarting the computer can solve that. Another neat part about this, you can operate with multiple displays at the remote location uh, as well. So um, let me do a little demonstration of it. Uh, this is uh, a picture of my uh, rig at my home QTH in Falls Church. So what you're seeing on here on the home screen in the upper right, you're seeing the Spanish app that remotely controls the antenna switching. So in the upper right here, you'll see I have different antennas for 15 meters, 12 meters, and so on, including a dummy load. And I'm able to switch between, between them. And uh, let me show you how this works. I only have a few ham apps on this uh, computer. And let me see if we can do, oh, by the way, this is what, the screen I'm seeing in Arizona. So I'm actually seeing when I have everything fired up, I will show you in a few minutes how that looks. This is the screen, what I'm seeing in Arizona, I'm seeing Ham Radio Deluxe on the right here, controlling the rig. 
Uh, on the upper left, you're seeing the uh, WSJTX FT8 app. Uh, down below, you're seeing the audio pan screen. And uh, also, I'm able to see the logbook. Let me see if I can get that fired up here and do a demonstration. So this is uh, my screen in Arizona right now that you're seeing. I go here to Splash Top Business App. I'm clicking on it. It's now seeing my desktop in Virginia. I'm clicking on that desktop in Virginia. And let's see, it's trying to connect right now. I'm getting the screen on the desktop. And I have to put, put my pin to the Windows computer. And of course, Microsoft gives me an advertisement I did not want. And then I'm going to click on Ham Radio Deluxe. There are alternatives to Ham Radio Deluxe. I like it because it interfaces real well with my ICOM rig and also WSJTX. But there are other uh, logging apps that can be used that can be interfaced. And I'll cover those also. Uh, we'll bring up W. Uh, we'll bring up the FT8 app, bringing it up here, and what we're doing now. Uh, on the left here, we could see we've got pretty good signal coming from the rig. I'm seeing 40, which is good. It's green, meaning I'm getting good audio into the app. So we're waiting now to demodulate the signals, and there we go. And we're gonna. Try to pick out a good signal. I usually like to pick out signals that have a reasonable signal st strength. So remember, these are what's being received in Virginia. These are the stations. And here I'm going to click on this station has eight, which is strong, uh, KE2. So that's going to be in New York. And I'm transmitting now. I'm, my transfer is enabled up here on the Ham Radio Deluxe. I can actually see the relative signal strength. And I know I'm transmitting uh, power out about 100%, about 100 watts right now. But I'm waiting for uh, him to respond, hopefully. There it is, boom. So uh, he's seeing me uh, plus 11. I'm getting him transmitting back to him that I'm seeing him at uh, plus seven. And we will see. Waiting for that. And I, I will go over with you some of the alternatives to some of the approaches that I'm taking here. And I didn't get the signal back. I got something else. So because I didn't receive his signal, I'm transmitting back to him, trying to transmit back to him again, repeating that I received a, a 7 dB signal. By the way, the Ham Radio Deluxe app interfaces with just about every rig imaginable that's out there. So this is kind of a universal type solution. In the lower right, by, and here it is, he's coming back to me, he's received me. Uh, and then the upper uh, left from Ham Radio Deluxe is the logbook. It's automatically logging me on um, at um, EQSL and uh, one of the other apps I have to manually upload to uh, the uh, LOTW. So I have to manually do that. And I'm clicking on that and you can see it's logged in. It gives me the location where he's at and uh, all, all is good. So let's see if we can go to, here we go. Just wanted to give you pictures. What does this all look like? So this is my Virginia station that's unmanned. Uh, you're seeing here that I operate uh, a dedicated computer with two screens, screen one, screen two. I have to have the two screens here so I can have two screens in Arizona. Um, it's, it's just a quirk that if I want to operate with two screens here, I have to have two screens in Virginia, and I have a separate personal computer screen. Uh, under my desk is a mess in Virginia. I have the ham computer, and I have a personal computer. And, and a paper shredder. And my rig is pretty simple. All it is is the ICOM 7610 with that uh, antenna switching box on top of it. And that's pretty much the extent of my ham station. If I go next in Arizona here, I operate on the left, you could see just have a desk and I have just one personal computer. I have two screens on it. And I use that to see two screens on that 
uh, Virginia computer. And it, on the right here, you see it's pretty simple. All I have is the uh, a refurbished computer. This was $229 computer that I'm using here in uh, uh, Arizona as my personal computer. And I have a Astron power supply I'm using for a two meter uh, rig. And uh, the only other thing I have on here, I've got an any tone rig on the left here that I can use for DMR. And it also works for 440 and two meters. Uh, this briefing will be handed out. So what I'm showing here are all the alternatives. Uh, you know, why, why are we using a separate computer uh, to do that third approach? Uh, and talking about the change that you have to make. Uh, you know, for $179, you get a lot of capability as far as solid state. Going to the next, this is a description of that Spanish box. And down here, I show compatibility uh, with uh, various rigs um, and compatibility with various logging programs. And you'll be able to see that in this. Uh, this is that automatic network rebooting tool, costs $100. You get it on Amazon. If you go to the remote uh, PC rebooting method for that third approach, um, I'm using an $80 product, but the truth is you can find smart plugs down to $15 now. But uh, so this is kind of overkill financially. The next one is a software. Again, this is the third method using desktop sharing where I'm using Splashtop Business uh, which is $139 a year, which is very pricey. Down at the bottom here, I mentioned some alternatives, but um, I found that the Splash Top business uh, really is just so easy to use and it's been completely reliable. Uh, question is the core program from the home PC, again, for that third app, uh, the logging program, and the one that controls the PC, I'm using a Ham Radio Deluxe, but I list here other approaches you can use in the lower left on this slide uh, that's freeware uh, that can be used as well. Um, now, there's some things I'm not doing. I'm, I don't have a rotator. I'm using all dipoles in the attic. So I just wanted to point out that if you do have a rotator, there are approaches to remotely control the rotator. These are some of the bits of software that people use. Uh, regarding the power amplifier, I have an ACOM 1000. Um, it uh, is a manually controlled amp, so I can't use it. But for those people that have amps that are uh, connected to their rigs or connected to the local computer, you can operate that power amp uh, remotely. And summary, uh, I think the most important thing I'm trying to get across here really is that it's not only necessary to come up with the software to do this remote, but you've got to have an automatic method to reboot your home network, and you need a remote method to reboot that home computer if you use a computer, unless you have a friend living nearby who has your key. Some people do, and that basically is it. So uh, if you want to contact me, that's my email address, and I'll be more than happy to uh, work with you or give you any more information you'd like. So I will turn it back to net control. Not so fast. Are there any questions? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll start you off with a, with a question. Um, especially when you're contesting, timing is everything. Have you had any issues with latency? No, I haven't done any contesting, um, but um, no, I haven't timed the latency issue. It has not been a problem at all uh, with any digital communications I've done. It, it just hasn't been an issue. Regarding the uh, German app on the, uh, on the iPad, uh, the designer there says that the uh, paddle approach to doing CW won't work because of latency on that app. Um, that is the iPad app, but otherwise I've had no problems. Any additional questions out there? 
Okay, if there, if there are no additional questions, let me give you a, a hearty thank you for a very interesting presentation and we'll stop recording. <laughs> okay, thank you.